so let's talk about what people are doing. Let's talk about what people are doing, what you're doing. Um, we started to get into it just a second ago, but the basics, like I've seen you talk about uh, getting chickens. I've seen you yeah. talk about planting food. What, yes. are you, what are you doing right now? Are, have you planted food? I've planted crops. I've got over a hundred uh, little seedlings going. Um, in your backyard? In the backyard. I got a, a blueberry tree going. I've got a grapevine going. I've got corn. I like, I've, I've got a few things in the, in the works, but, um, again, it's all too late. I should have, we all should have been there by now. Like everyone should have been there by now. We're in, we're, we're in 2020 and the way that we feed ourselves is through the economy. There's like, everyone has base human needs, food, shelter, love, this and that. Right. Um, yeah. and it's like, we use the economy to get money in order to purchase the food. And it's like, okay, you took away the economy, so let's just get right to the food. Well, yeah. And so that's why I'm like, victory gardens were a thing back in the 40s, I think, World War II, um, where I think it was like the soldiers, they didn't have enough food to feed the, shol to, to feed the soldiers out there. So the government put out this campaign to, to get everyone to grow food and vegetables in their yards mm -hmm. on their little balconies. If you lived in an apartment, like why does it take the government to put out a campaign in order for people to take action? Like yeah. we should be our, every single house in this neighborhood, like that should be the corn guy. That should be the watermelon chick. That should be the onion dude. Like yeah. we should be able to walk out our door and have all of our neighbors participating in vegetable fruit co-ops. Yeah. Well, so that's an, a really interesting and great point that you brought up. So it's the peaceful solution to what's happening here. You're, you're actually right. Um, with the exception of, we don't know how to make toilet paper, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you take it all the way back and we've talked about this in, in, um, in other conversations, um, where we had kind of a different topic, but, I was talking about like the industrial age versus the information age, but, but this is very, very, um, a great topic, a timely subject. So in the old days, we, there weren't big companies. I'm talking about like cowboys and Indians kind of days where Tribal. the old West kind of days where, uh, we were all here as settlers and we were settling new land and you would come in and you either had a trade or a service or something that you, or a product. So you were either a farmer or you were a seamstress or you were a blacksmith or you were a cattle rancher or whatever. Like, like you said, you know, one person grows corn, another person grows watermelons, so on and so forth. Another person cotton and, and on and on. And what they would do in that time for the most part was trade. And there's the island that, uh, that I've talked about in, I think, Greece, where people forget to die because... They say that, but people live well over 100. The unemployment rate on the island is 70%, but yet everybody still survives because they all have their gardens. They all trade things back and forth. They don't need really money. They don't really need money um, because they all just trade. I've got the tea. You've got you know the squash, yeah. and that's how that goes. But we've gotten so lazy and used to society providing food and everything for us that we actually have become soft and can't, couldn't survive. You know, if you right. take a lot of people like that Naked and Afraid show, you take people, anybody from any town in the U.S. and put them out in the jungle or, you know, wherever. Yeah. Um, so they did one in Florida. They just took them to a swamp in Florida. For sure. Which is right outside of society. Right in their neighborhood. Yeah, in their yeah. neighborhood. Yeah, and, and these people unless they have extensive survival knowledge, they can't survive. They don't know how to hunt and gather. They don't know how to trap an animal. They don't know how to even cook an animal. Yeah. They definitely don't know how to find nuts and berries and leaves that you can eat. So we're at that point now where we've given up all of our survival knowledge. Yeah. We can't start a fire on our own without a lighter. And see, a lot of these things we don't have to, right? We have lighters. We have... Uh, there are seeds and different starter crops available in the marketplace. All of these things are available. There are YouTube videos on how to uh, how to have backyard chickens, how to get eggs every single day, how to do the thing that we all need to do is there. Well, those are our basic survival 
um, skills back right. in the day. Everybody knew how to make a fire back in the day. Yeah. Everybody knew how to grow corn or strawberries, you yeah. know? Yeah. The problem isn't the tools to do it. It's why people aren't doing it. Like they're viewing this as some like temporary thing. And it's like, no, this thing could happen, whether it's a natural disaster, the economy shutting down a disease, like, Life happens, and if you are not in possession of your own food production, you're done. Like, it's that simple. And so, my idea, and I've like, I started this thing called Whole Seeds like six years ago, and I bought millions of survival seed kits, like little tubes that had like a few thousand seeds in it. And, um, you know, like I said, I've always been twisted with this weird like conspiracy. So, like, <laughs> I created the website, I put everything up there, but like, the marketing was not on point. I, I sold them all over time. They all sold, but um, it didn't grow into this big like thing, you know, but the vision was the same. And that it, it's the same as it was six, seven years ago as it is now. And that's, you should be able to go out and talk with your neighbor and exchange these, these fruits and vegetables. And there should be packs of men who go out and fish there should be packs of men who go out and hunt, women too, whoever's down, whoever's down to put in the the cooperative work to survive, like that needs to happen. And we're so weak until that happens. We're depending on a few grocery chains for our survival. Like think of how many hours people are spending in line to get what they need. Well, my versus... wife just went through a fast food line and the line was bonkers. Dude. Like, uh, it was crazy. Um, and now we call fast food, which is probably, if you put it on a scale of best to least healthy, right. fast food is probably cl very close to the least healthy form of food you could get. Right. But they're now considered essential. Right. All the big boys are still they're making record profits right now. The grocery stores are making record that's profits it. right now. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's a, a crazy place to be, you yeah. know, where we don't know how to grow our own food. We don't know how to, we depend completely like a baby, like an infant child that's on, it. on food providers and fast food and grocery stores. Uh, and without that, frankly, a lot of people would die. That's it. So again, going back to it, um, the economy shut down. People are told not to work. Working is the way you feed yourself. So there's going to come a point if this continues where people are going to get hungry. And like you said, national guard tanks on the streets, they're going to be what defending food banks because people are hungry. Like these people need to take action on their own right now amongst themselves in their neighborhoods and cover the land, cover the land in seeds. Like you're 40 to 60 days away from harvest. Well, then you also, when you talk about seeds, you have the the, the GMO and the Monsanto thing going on where yeah. Monsanto has stopped farmers from saving their own seeds. Yeah, you which can was get a normal thing. You can get heirloom, you know, organic seeds out there. You definitely need to watch what brand you're getting. But even if it's GMO, you're still going to stay alive. Well, you're still going to stay you alive. Know? But there was something happening where Monsanto specifically was was suing the pants off of farmers, quite literally. Yeah. Uh, suing them because they were saving their own seeds, which if, if you had a, a seed that was created a great crop that your father and your grandfather and his grandfather used. Right. They, and it always produced this wonderful crop of vegetables. Uh, but they come and tell you, you can't do that anymore. You can't, they're your seeds, but you right. can't save them. Yeah. Um, you need to buy them from us. Yeah. And, That's the, and the seeds that they're selling don't re reproduce themselves. Right. They've, they've genetically engineered these seeds to not produce seeds. So that lack of reproductive activity then makes humans non-sterile. And so that's why there's like, this is all just coming to a, to a head right now. And it's like, I don't know. It's, it's really weird. It but, is weird. Um, it's like, it's like this utopian dream of mine to see the people rise up and say no. But like, fact is we're f <laughs> <laughs> unless people do what not not necessarily what i'm saying because maybe that's egotistical for me to to want 
to get people involved in that. You know, maybe that's like some ego thing of mine where it's like, you guys need to, everyone needs to grow crops right now. Like that's kind of weird, you know, but like, well, that's the it's opposite. also the solution. Uh, it, it's a solution to a lot of, a lot of problems, man. A lot of problems. And it's so simple. And it's just, like I said, it's either going to be vegetable gardens or riots. All right, let's get it ready. Vegetable gardens, riots.